today for Thanks Flicking. It's a perfect movie for Thanks Flicking, aka Powders. It's The Wizard of Oz, 1939, the original, the original. But it's not really the original. It's actually even then, back then, it was a remake. But it's also of the greatest film year of all time next to 1999. We're not going to get too deep into all of that, but I want to talk to you about what exactly Wizard of Oz is when it comes to film. And who exactly Victor Fleming, the film's director, is. So let's get into it, AKA Powders. Thanks Flicking 2024, The Wizard of Oz. Quiet on the set. Camera speed, sound production, take one. Action! This is tough, AKA Powders. Welcome back, happy thanks Flicking. Happy Thanksgiving. I, I hope you're celebrating the holiday. We all don't have loved ones. A lot of us may have choppy friendships. But there's always a person or two in our lives that we're thankful for. And that's, that's why we get together and share a meal. And it doesn't have to be a giant turkey. I mean, I, I would love to have an Arby's. Seven, <laughs> I would love to have an Arby's Thanksgiving. Just a couple bags of food. Maybe a little bit of football. Maybe a little bit of alcohol. Okay, a lot of alcohol. But some good times. So I'm hoping you can get there, my AKA Patters. I love this holiday. And I love this. I love just doing the deep dive, discovering something, and seeing a whole new light. And a lot of where we're going to go today is strictly from the top of my gray matter. It's it's me. It's me talking about me and what I remember. Yes, I did do a recent deep dive on everything Wizard of Oz. Yes, it is linked to Wicked, dropping from Universal Studios, a.k.a. Comcast or Universal Pictures, which is a perfect drop, by the way, to drop a Wizard of Oz movie around the time of Thanksgiving. Wizard of Oz 1939 became a part of, permanently a part of the American lexicon when Turner Broadcast Network, TNT, right? TBS, Turner Broadcast, I don't know, what, what is the uh, TBN? <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it was TBS. They just started showing uh, Wizard of Oz, and they called on. And I believe they were having it on repeat or running for a few hours, just repeatedly. And this became somewhat of a Thanksgiving tradition, uh, sparking merchandise from the movie. So one time you would go to collectible shops and get ceramic plates and snow globes and and all these fine collectibles. Now, some of these collectibles have become rare. They're tough to get. They're expensive. They've gone up in value. Similar, similarly, uh, Star Trek uh, went through a, uh, a, uh, a licensing venture. Uh, during the uh, same time, so you would like it's like you would go into some of these collectible shops. The boys would get uh, Star Trek, then the girls would get Wizard of Oz. Some of those Star Trek collectibles too have uh, turned up super rare, and we all know the imagery. We all know Judy Garland uh, when we think about Wizard of Oz, but again, we don't relate. The life of Judy Garland to Dorothy anymore. Uh, Judy Garland, the original A Star is Born. Uh, yeah, tortured Hollywood individual. You might want to say the birth of Holly Weird, where we all knew just something was up with this town. And how, how hard it was to keep your nose clean. But when it comes to 1939, some people will say Wizard of Oz was a remake. It, it was a silent movie. 1925, this is true. That one focus on the toy maker. But it goes back even further. There's multiple silent movies. 
technically the silent films of the early 1900s was of a Wizard of Oz franchise. Frank Baum, he's the guy behind it all. He shifted what he wrote in the books and when he got involved. See, he's the one that put it on stage. He's the one that got involved directly. He kept sculpting the story to become a good stage play because it was his livelihood. There's been no stealing of concepts of Wizard of Oz by individuals. There's been no raping, if you will, of Wizard of Oz by corporations. It was all done by the original creator, Frank Baum. A lot of people will say, well, the one direct sequel is Return to Oz by, by Disney. Well, not really, because I believe uh, there was a 1975 animated cartoon voiced by Judy Garland and a lot of Hollywood elite at the time called, I think it was Beyond Oz. That will be coming up on my YouTube channel. So we have a, a book series that hit. We have a stage production that hit. We have a run of silent movies that hit. Then we get the seminal 1925 silent movie. And then in 1939, we get potentially the greatest fantasy movie of all time. See, I recall a quote by Harlan uh, Ellison that where he says The Dark Crystal is, is the only movie that qualifies as fantasy. And it really struck me, and I do believe it to be true, where, you know, and he has his reasons for Lord of the Rings at the time. He has his reasons for Dragon Slayer at the time. But fantasy really hadn't penetrated into cinema yet. And I believe the Lord of the Rings he references is the uh, Raskin and Bass animated ones, not the live, Peter Jackson live action. But he makes this argument that the Dark Crystal, it's fantasy because it's its all puppetry. And just like on premise alone, it's fantasy. But it's also fantasy, right? And it makes you easily dismiss Wizard of Oz. But Oz as a concept is an idea that people loved exploring and going to for a hell of a long time upon its inception people wanted to go to Oz so there's been all these different ways to do it Frank, Frank Baum our author he played with those ideas He's, he played with what to take from here what how the audience reacts over there what do we need what do we need what do we need he would shave his own book. He, he was not true to even his own source material because he realized things shift in media. What you read in the book isn't what you see on stage. And he was behind that. He was the guy behind that. So we get to this 1939 movie and Victor Fleming Academy Award winning director Victor Fleming I often say 1939 and 1999 are the two greatest single years in cinema history prove me wrong but Victor Fleming in the same year directs Wizard of Oz which is a historical troubled production but he also directs Gone with the Wind and with Gone with the Wind, he nearly does everything regarding the camera. I mean, his fingerprints are all over that movie. This guy spent a year in Hollywood, directed a ton of movies. Uh, he is of the 30s, of the late 30s. But throughout the 30s, he's the career guy. Give him, give him a script, give him a cast, and you will get a movie on time. Absolute workhorse. So 
So when we get into this movie, finally, right? Ten, ten, ten minutes in. When we discuss the Wizard of Oz, the character of Dorothy, which is the audience's analog, the audience's avatar, we love her as a character. Her journey into Oz, her discovery of self-confidence, the fight, her struggle, the friends she meets along the way, the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, easy representations of what we see in her real life the old hag trying to kill Toto is the wicked witch of the west and it's absolute fantasy this movie it's joyful fantasy and then what it triggers is almost a lifetime's worth of new interpretations, new positions. Recently, I was watching Tin Man, the three-hour-long sci-fi series, miniseries. Uh, Alan Cummings plays the Scarecrow in that. But that's a realistic deconstruction. And uh, Universal had a series called The Emerald City. Again, a, a more realistic deconstruction. We've had animated sequels. We've have we've had anime sequels. Everybody wants to dip their toe into Wizard of Oz and give you their take on it. Everybody wants an updated version of Wizard of Oz. Just give us the original, but update it, so we can I don't know maybe look at it a little little bit better with a little bit fresh set of eyes. There's nothing that slows down this franchise. This franchise has been strong from inception. And we're seeing it now with Wicked. Wicked just destroyed the box office. Lord of the Rings doesn't, doesn't quite do it. Uh, and we kind of want to say Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson, masterpiece. The Hobbit doesn't quite land. And then we get the Rings of Power on Amazon. And that's nothing but divisive. Uh, people actually go to war over over that one. But there's no uh, adulation. And yeah, Wicked has a, a contingent online that's really against it for, for some reason. But it just goes to show you uh, even that powers through divisiveness. Uh, Rings of Power could not. But this movie is absolute perfection. I love the abstract nature. I love the creepiness of some of it. I love the songs. I love the placement of the music. Judy Garland is incredible. Just you watch her on screen and she's she's there. And it really makes me want to go back and watch Ty West's uh, Pearl. Just and and that movie sort of takes place around the time of Wizard of Oz but like that's the girl on screen and I love that connection I'm grateful for the Wizard of Oz because it truly opened my eyes this year which is why I stopped everything I was doing yesterday uh, no content yesterday by the way because I was so enthralled in everything Wizard of Oz and I want to do more coming that's what she said. Uh, of this franchise. Uh, and I, I don't care. Like I know we're late. Uh, we missed the, the Wicked Drop. But this is one hell of a franchise. It, it really is. And there's no, there's nothing like it. I, I would say the counterpart would be uh, Batman. Where uh, people just love those interpretations. And there's no wrong interpretation. Wizard of Oz very much the same way. And we can make arguments that Wicked uh, deconstructs, it, uh, deconstructs it a little bit too much to where when we watch the original, yeah, we call this the original, which is fine. Uh, it it takes away how we view the 1939 Wizard of Oz. It, it skews it. It takes away some of the impact if we watch Wicked first. I believe this movie should be the introduction to anyone 
with Wizard of Oz. And it's the only film that there's so much before and then so much after. We cannot do that with The Dark Knight. We, we start with the 1989 Batman. And we may watch the 60s cartoon series. We, we, we are live action the Adam West or we may go back and watch some of the cartoons of the 70s we may go back and watch the black and white serials but there's not a lot there going forward there's a lot there's a lot to get into because in 1989 that really was the arrival of Batman even though he had things before same as in 1939 Wizard of Oz aka Powders yeah, uh, I, I just hate to say it. Uh, I, I reprogrammed, re-educated myself in, in the last couple of days. And then 10 days ago, I would not have said that Wizard of Oz was the greatest fantasy movie of all time. But it is. And just watching it recently truly opened my eyes. And you have the whole Turner broadcast available on HBO Max. So do yourself a favor. Uh, don't just watch this movie once watch it watch it again have your laptop open the second time and just start digging around uh, a lot of the stuff i mentioned is available on youtube for free so there you go thank you very much ak powders i love you happy thanks flicking rock and roll okay that's a wrap <laughs>